Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad in which we will discuss utilization of constraint resources. Constraint means limited. You don't have enough of a particular resource. Now, in the real world, we always have constraint resources. We don't have unlimited resources. Otherwise, if we do have unlimited resources, we don't even have to study economics because we can do whatever we want to. That's in La La Land. In the real world, you would always have a limited resource of some sort. And the goal of any company is to produce and sell as many products as they can. That's fine. The problem could be you might have a constraint resources that's limiting you. That's not allowing you to produce and sell as many units as you need. And these are called bottleneck or bottlenecks. You could have more than one bottleneck. Now, why is it called a bottleneck? Well, simply put, let's take a look at those two bottles that are filled in M&M. One of them, they, we have plenty of M&M. &M. The, the goal is to transfer the M&Ms from the bottle to the jar. Notice, this has a, a, bit, a larger bottleneck. We can produce more, we can transfer faster. This have a small bottleneck. The, sp the small bottleneck, it's gonna slow you down. So anything that limits your capacity to produce, is called the bottleneck and this is why it's called the bottleneck because it's gonna squeeze you now every company will have some sort of a bottleneck no way around it that bottleneck could be labor and now most companies they experience shortage and shortage in labor anywhere you go people there they, they have a science for hiring could be time you don't have enough time for example for my company i wish i had more time during the day to produce more it could be machine hours it could be anything whatever is limiting you whatever is slowing you down that's your bottleneck now we established that we have a bottleneck at the end we're going to see what can you do to improve your bottleneck but what should you do now what should you do what should you do about the bottleneck here's what you have to do produce and sell the units with the contribution margin per unit per constraint resource. Now, I did not say just contribution margin because students, what they would do, they would look, okay, I'm gonna produce the highest contribution margin. No, it's the highest contribution margin per constraint resources. So what gives you the highest contribution margin giving your constraint resource? And don't worry, we would look at an example. In this way, you will maximize your total contribution margin. Another picture of a constraint resource is basically traffic. Think when you leave the toll on a highway, maybe it's like 10, you have 10 tolls. And as soon as you leave, the, the road will go back to three or four lanes. So notice what's gonna happen. It's gonna slow it down. This is another example of a bottleneck. And notice what it looks like. It looks like a bottle, like a bottleneck. And this is what we mean by a constrained resource. Think also the idea of a chain. The, 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 the strength of a chain, it's as strong as its weakest link. So to improve, to make this the chain stronger, you have to strengthen its weakest link. And the weakest link is the bottleneck. So the company is as good as their weakest link, which is their bottleneck. The best way to illustrate this concept is to use numbers to show you how to produce giving constraint resources. Before we look at an example, most likely you are a student or a CPA candidate. That's why you are watching. I'm glad you are watching, but you, you need to go a step further for farhatlectures.com where you will find additional resources lectures multiple choice true false exercises that's going to help you do better whether you are studying for your cpa exam or you are taking accounting courses if you have not connected with me on linkedin social media please do so like this recording share it with other connect with me on instagram facebook twitter and reddit so let's take a look at this example adam company is selling two product one is a premium product and one is a generic product. Whatever it is, just one is a premium, one is a generic. And here's some additional data about the product. For the premium product, Adam is selling each unit for $50. The variable expense is 26, therefore the contribution margin is 24. The current demand per week for the premium product is 2,000 unit. The, contrib the contribution margin ratio which is the contribution mar the contribution margin divided by sales is 48 percent and we need one minute of processing on machine time a on machine a to produce the premium unit the generic unit we're selling each unit for 40 the variable expenses is 25 
give us the contribution margin of 15 and there's a demand of 2200 units for the generic product the contribution margin ratio is 38 percent and it takes us half a minute on machine a to produce the generic product now here we are ignoring the fixed cost and the assumption is we have enough capacity for the fixed cost the fixed cost is not an obstacle the fixed cost is not a bottleneck what we're going to be assuming is the bottleneck here is machine a so we have a limited amount of machine a we only have 2400 minutes when we when we when we use machine a at its 100 percent capacity so we can only produce use it for 2400 units and this is our constraint resource so machine a is our constraint resource so for all other machines we have access capacity and this is why we determine machine A as the constraint resource. The first question is how many units of each product can be processed through machine A in one minute? Well, get, let, let's think about it. For the premium, for one unit, one unit in one minute. So for one minute, we can produce one unit. For the generic product, because it takes us half a minute to produce, we can produce two units. What does that mean? Let's think about it from a from a, a numerical or from a financial perspective from a financial perspective for a minute if we produce a generic the product the premium product and we produce one unit we can make a profit of 24 dollars if we use the same minute to produce the generic product per unit we make 15 dollars but we can produce two therefore we can make 30 dollars in profit so notice although the generic units per unit is less but they would consume they will tax less resources they would require less resources to, pro to to produce so in the time of making 24 dollars we can take that minute and make 30 dollars simply put the contribution margin per minute we can compute this we can we can take the contribution margin per unit divided by the time required to produce which is a minute the contribution margin per one minute is 24 dollars for the premium and $30 for the generic. Now, how are we going to allocate our time to maximize contribution margin for the whole company? Well, let's think about it. We have the weekly demand for the generic is 2,200. And remember, we already established that we need to focus on the generic first. So what we do is we'll take the weekly demand for the generic and produce as many as we can for the generic unit. Well, it's gonna take us half a minute to produce uh, one unit therefore we can we will consume 1100 minutes we can we will consume 1100 minutes to produce all 2200 generic so we will satisfy the demand for the generic units first and once we use up 1100 minutes what's left is 1300 minutes because we have 2400 on machine a we used up the 1100 for the generic units we are left with 1300 unit 300 minutes to produce the premium product now it takes us a minute to produce it we can produce 1300 now we do have more demand than 1300 but we cannot satisfy the demand this is a classic example for the iphone when Apple computers produces iPhones, they don't have enough capacity to produce enough iPhones, especially when it first come when it first come out, to meet all their demand. So what they have to do, they have to pick and choose where should they utilize their resources. Then what we do is we can compute now the total contribution margin. If we do so, we maximize the generic and we make 33,000 in total contribution margin for that week. And we can only produce from the premium product 1,300 and we can make 31,200. Together will give us the total contribution margin for the company. And that is the max. Now in the real world, the company could have three, four, five different product or maybe 10 different product and various different constraint resources how do they do this they use a software and they will kind of basically the software would they will input the information and it will tell them it will spit out what is the best way to utilize our constraint resources but this example here is just to basically to kind of get you familiar with the concept and this is all what you need whether you are a student or a cpa candidate now how to reduce or em eliminate bottlenecks what could you do because if you can increase the capacity of the constraint you can increase your production and you can increase sales well there are different methods to do so if the issue is time well work overtime or hire more employees what else you can do you can re-engineer the whole product to reduce the bottleneck 
That's another way you can do. You can invest more resources. For example, if you remember in the example that we worked, the problem was machine A. Well, if we buy another machine A, then we have 4,800 minutes per week. Then we can satisfy the demand for the premium as well as for the generic. Then we will. Then we might face another another battle, uh, constraint or a bottleneck. Also, we can shift resources from non-bottleneck processes if we have extra employees that they are not really, we're not utilizing their capacity to the max, move them to the bottleneck area to improve the bottleneck area. Improve the process, how we are producing the product. Just re-engineer the process. Don't re-engineer the product because you could also re-engineer the product or re-engineer the process. Minimize defective unit produced in the bottleneck because every time you produce a defective unit, basically, it took the resources, then you have to throw it away. Minimize those defective units. So this way, all the units produced are good to go. What should you do now? It's great that you have listened to this recording, but what you should do is go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs that's going to help you improve your knowledge, your understanding of this topic. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career, especially if you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.